Hey there YouTube, this is Die Fly Fish. I just want to show you um, a new electrolyte constituency that I put together. This is the dried material that I made yesterday. And in essence, um, I have the list of materials here, which I will put on the web um, later. But suffice to say, this is how dry the electrolyte material is right now. I made these cells approximately, you know, five days ago. And the thickness of the material actually is the width of a coffee filter with the material painted on either side and then it was sandwiched together and because it's a very very delicate type of electrolyte I landed up um, lashing it together with some PTFE tap tape and some electrical tape just to keep these two cells together so we have a magnesium electrode <clears throat> and a carbon graphite electrode and just to show you we'll take some measurements um, also during the formative phase this is also very important that I've been doing experiments with regard to magnetic fields um, during crystal formation and I've been running a few experiments uh, utilizing um, different aspects of the cell either having the magnesium facing towards the North Pole or the carbon facing towards the North Pole and I seem to uh, have a repetitive uh, differential and if other people attempt this I'd be interested to see if they're finding uh, the same effects so in any event you know these two cells um, I made earlier last evening and they are dry um, the electrolyte is extraordinarily dry and it's very very thin and I allowed the crystals to form um, with different aspects of the cell facing the north face of the ceramic magnets. Now the lithium perchlorate is one of the constituencies that has a very very dramatic um, magnetic interaction so the crystals form depending upon which way the magnetic field lines are going so it does have a, a definite effect. So what we'll do is take some measurements this is you know just a little test cell that I made and again it's it's dry and when we take a look at the voltage here you know, that one shows around 2.9 volts. This one I formed without any magnetic influence. This one from uh, five or six days ago, we'll take a measurement here from a voltage standpoint. Okay, 1.67. This one is also five days ago, 1.61. These are from last night um, that we can test. 1.69 and this one is from last night as well 1.63 so I'm finding that when the magnesium is facing the north pole of the magnet we're getting a little bit better output from them and again we can show that effect <clears throat> with these two smaller cells which are five or six days old um, here we have I'm going to change it to the milliamp hour draw just so you can see and if we take a measurement reading here on the smaller of the two cells, we're showing 0.1 milliamps. And this one here, which was north pole down, it's 3.34 milliamps. So when the magnesium is facing down, this output of the cell is much greater than when I had the carbon facing the magnet. Again, you're seeing um, quite a dramatic difference there. So I find that very fascinating. All right, now the cells from last night will do the same thing where we'll test the milliamp draw. This was where the carbon was facing the north face of the magnet. We see it's still going up. And granted, those are smaller cells down there as well. So we're showing still rising so 14 to 18 milliamps is probably where we'll eventually end up with that but that's what the milliamp hour is with this cell right now and we'll test it with the one that had the magnesium to the north face down you see quite a, a difference in the milliamp hour rate so that one's showing 40 milliamp hours and again I find it fascinating because these cells were fabricated at the identical same time in the identical same fashion with the same thickness of material there's no differential the only difference was how I allowed them to cure and again I uh, polarize them with a uh, dedicated power supply briefly just a you know a couple zaps <clears throat> at 31 volts 0 0.08 amps and I allowed them to sit on these magnetic stacks um, for well well over 14 hours so in any event um, just wanted to give you guys an update that this material 
you know, and again, that's that's how dry it is. This is the residual, and the moisture that's trapped in the lattice um, with the silica gel, you know, is very in direct, intimate contact. And you, if you look very, very carefully, you can see the um, you can see the crystals on the edge of this. If I can get this camera to focus, uh, maybe it won't focus. But suffice to say. Uh, Maybe worth looking at. So, if anybody else is doing these tests with these type of materials, um, I would definitely encourage them to see if they are finding the same results with a differential in which way the the crystals are forming away from the north face, and depending upon which aspect of the metal or the electrodes that are being utilized. So, for what it's worth, thanks for watching. Have a great day, and uh, keep up the research. And more um, will come this way as it's found. Hey YouTube, I just wanted to um, take a little bit update video just so I can show you with more clarity um, the readings on these things. So, again, this is a five or six day old cell that's been you know, extraordinarily dry, dry as a bone. And this is the one that was formed with the magnet facing the north face facing the magnesium. And the output on this cell is as follows. So it's approximately 3 milliamp hours. Again, the same one from last night or earlier yesterday afternoon um, with the magnetic face facing the magnesium during the formative phase. We're showing still going up. Thirty-eight milliamp hours, so thereabouts. Okay, and this is the one that was formed with the carbon graphite face facing towards the north pole, and the milliamp hour output on that one. Oops, I got to switch electrodes. That helps. This one I think will probably go up to around fourteen or so thereabouts. But what I was thinking about is, you know, the one quote that John gave us from Prigany was, you know, stresses far out of uh, equilibrium. And I thought, well, why not have crystals form with a magnetic field stress as they're forming? So perhaps it's forming a deformation in the lattice or stressing the lattice as it's forming, making somewhat of an imbalance in, in comparison to just a standard uh, magnetic field of the Earth or the, or the gravitational pull. So... For what it's worth, um, the theory behind forming it on a magnet is thus, okay? That shows you there is definitely a differential between how these cells form seemingly. And again, if anybody replicates this um, and they find the same thing, I would look forward to hearing back from you to find a confirmation of uh, how these fields, either pushing away from the magnesium or pushing away from the carbon, affect this crystalline interaction in the electrolyte layer. Have a great day. Thank you.